Hi everyone and welcome to another repaint video! I'm Hannah from Hoodolls and I made this doll for a fruit and berry collaboration held by Ragdollsis on Instagram. A claw Venus from the Freaky Fusion edition was sacrificed for the sake of art this time. She was in excellent condition, which kind of was a shame to ruin, but it's too late for regrets now. I love the outcome and I hope you'll like it also. I start off cutting the hair close to the scalp before scraping the hair out of the plugs with a flat screwdriver. I decided relatively early that I would make a Cloudberry inspired doll, some of you actually guessed it. I never liked them as a child and I still think them overrated. Here they are called the gold of the forest though. Cloudberries are still pretty nostalgic to me. So Cloudberry it is, Jotron in Swedish. I couldn't find any etymology information which is kind of sad. As usual, I use 100% acetone to remove the paint. This is always so satisfying to turn the face into a blank canvas. To remove the flocking, I add as much acetone as it can absorb. Then I wait a couple of seconds before I can scrape it off with a blunt end of my X-Acto knife. The ears are super cute, but I made a last minute decision and cut them off. I love how they look like leaves. There we go, all clean and ready for her face up. I start with outlines in the first layer, creating a base. I knew I wanted to paint some kerbits on her. I love those art pieces. A dream is to have a blue door with kerbits, but I will make do with a doll for now. I start with white to create the outlines. Then I work on her nose and lips. Here I'm shading the inner parts of the eyes to create some depth. Then I add some final highlights before sealing with Mr. Super Clear. Every time I read or write the word sealing, I'm like... Seal? Second layer, enhancing colors, nothing to see here. I tried to make her mouth smile, but I'm not sure I succeeded. Third layer, here I started on the paint job. Here is a disclaimer though, because I'm not using the right paint or the right technique to be calling this a proper Kerbits paint job. It's inspired by it. I enrolled in a course next summer in Kerbits painting. Not sure if it's going to work due to Covid and a new little puppy, but just in case though, it would be fun to learn it properly.
Now I've been quiet for a while, finally we're on the fourth layer. Here I'm going in with some white acrylics to highlight. Since the cloudberry is called the forest's gold, I thought it fitting with some gold in the face up. This meant that I couldn't spray with Mr. Super Clear in the end, but that was fine since I didn't use any watercolor pencil on this layer. The face up is done! Time for some body blushing and body paint. I painted the fingers gold and I had to add gloss varnish in the end because it started to fall off. Lesson learned. Let's attach the head to the body. This was when I realized she actually has a superb moving range in her neck. That's nice. Then I made some hair from acrylic yarn. Twirl it, cut it, tie it, brush it, iron it, cut it, glue it, peel it, cut it. That's it. This, this is the strangest face in doll customizing. I glued the hair with a simple parting since I had some hairstyling ideas. Now look, I'm not a hairdresser, I'll never be one, and I have no idea what I'm doing, but I did my research and found a traditional hairstyle that I wanted to try out. You tie the hair in a low ponytail before adding a ribbon, red for unmarried, white for the married ones. Then you take one half of the ponytail and twirl it around the ribbon like this. I used a needle to keep the ribbon in place. Thank the crafting gods, I'm working on a doll. Then I throw the ribbon over the head and then do the same thing with the other end of the ribbon over the head and into a bow. And uh, this is the result. Super cute. I might try this out with my dreads extensions. Gothic style. Then I went overkill and unnecessary. I used corn blast for the top because life isn't complicated enough and I thought it fun. With a brown elastic base though, it, it looked pretty cool. I don't recommend it though. I finished the top part and it's now time for the skirt. I love, love, love this fabric. Ideally the pattern would be smaller, but this is acceptable. I took care placing the sewing pattern so the design would be symmetrical. Then I added some lace after gathering it.
Finally, I gathered the top part of the skirt before I sewed it on to the corn blast thing. With the base done, there was some time for details. You can find this super cute coat pattern on Etsy made by Delightful. It just adds this flair and design to the concept. I love it. Now it just needs a snap button. There are these traditional shoes that I was inspired by and uh, decided to custom a pair of shoes. It's been a while. Shoes, check! Time to gear up! The customizing journey doesn't end here, because I made her a custom stand with a lamp, but first, let's make some resin cloudberries. Why do I always point away with my finger when I make tiny details? Like, what am I pointing at? I don't know. It's a weird habit, and now you'll also notice it because I said something about it. How fun is that? The berries are finished, but I wanted them transparent, so I ordered some silicone mold materials and went to work. I thought for sure it would take 24 hours to cure, but it only takes 3 to 4 hours. Resin time! I used this two-part crystal clear resin, it's pretty neat, but I realized they had changed something between the last one I used and this one. Part B was much more liquid before, and the resin tended to take 48 hours to cure properly. Super inconvenient. So I'm glad they changed it. Here I'm adding magenta and yellow from Schminke to make it orange. Before pouring, I used my old super awful shimmer eyeshadow to dust the mold. It just gave it some shimmer. Then, since the hardener was thicker than usual, it kind of went blorp. It's, it's okay though. Since the big one is supposed to be turned into a lamp, I added a pipette piece before curing. And well, everyone loves a demolding video, so here it is. Ta-da! So pretty.
It has been a while since I soldered something. I used this, a stand, a battery holder with switching cables, some shrinking cord, solder, soldering iron, a resistor and lead. Usually the long cord is the plus side, There it is. And there's the one on the lead. Let's bring them together. I start with threading the piece of the shrinking cord on and then stripping the cord from the plastic. Then I hook them into each other. A little cord arm hook. Then I solder away. Next is the negative side. I could have put the resistor before the lead, it doesn't matter. But it's the same principle, arm hooks and soldering before I cover it all with some electrical tape. Counting out what resistance is needed is super simple. The warm white lead I'm using wants a maximum of 3 voltage. My battery holder holds two 3 voltage batteries. So I want to lower it by 3 volts. The lead also only takes 20 milliamperes. I divide the 3 volts by 20 milliamperes and get 150 ohms. Look, it works perfectly. It's so cool. Next is making the actual stand. I think I spent more time making a stand than making the doll. It was so stressful because I had never done anything like this before. I used two wood pieces from somewhere, glued them together and made a velvet base using some cardboard. Then I drilled some hole for some hard wire. The wire comes from an old notebook. It's covered in plastic, so it is somewhat isolated, which is nice, since we don't want to short circuit. To make the terrain a bit uneven, I used some tin foil and covered them with glued tissue paper. Then, while waiting for it to dry, I made some leaves from coffee filters. Time for some grass. This was so much fun. Before drying, I covered the nozzle of the vacuum cleaner with a piece of fabric, then I could just vacuum the excess off. Then a second patch of coat before permanently attaching the battery holder to the stand. Then I added some long grass.
I also used some Fisalis peel to give the berries some leaves. The colors were too vibrant, so I added dark brown pastels to tone them down a bit. Then I made a stand. I'm not going into how I made this, because I didn't film the process properly and, well, I, I didn't know if it was going to work. <laughs> Maybe next time. Then with some glue, coffee grounds, burnt umber paint and more glue, I finished the stand and it looked amazing. Huzzah! I wanted to take this opportunity to thank my Patreons, you guys, thank you so 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 much. I am honored and honestly a bit baffled by the whole thing, but yeah, thank you. In the end, I sacrificed a pillowcase to make a little basket for her. It was worth it. I'm just going to skip the certificate of authenticity part for today. This video became longer than I thought, so I'm just skipping to the comparison and the result. So this is what I started with, and here she is. I made a night lamp, ha! I love her clothes, but I think my favorite part is the stand. I remember writing to Kiro that my diorama skills are weak and, well, I am working on it. Thank you so much for watching, my next video will be her fam. Until next time, bye!